Okay, I thought that we'd uh, close our circle of uh, circle questions by looking at a couple of uh, interesting uh, examples where I think they're sort of you know, a little interesting and see if we can solve them. Some of them are sort of amazing. Um, I'll write them up here on the, on the uh, whiteboard. Let's take a look at them. The first one is uh, to find all the points x, y uh, such that, first of all, uh, x equals y. Okay, so they're equal, the same thing. And second of all, that they are all four units from the point 1, 3. Okay? So I'm looking for all the points that are four units from the point 1, 3, but for which x and y are the same. Well, if you think about it, what are all the points that are four units from the point 1, 3? Well, that's a circle of points. So in fact, we're trying to find points on a circle where the circle is centered at 1, 3 and has a radius of 4. So first of all, let's just find the circle that's centered at 1, 3 of radius 4. Well, let's see. We know what the uh, formula is for a circle. It's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So what do we know? Well, we know that the center of the circle must be at 1, 3. So I'll insert that in for the h and the k. x minus 1 squared plus y minus, uh, let's see, 3 squared equals in the radius, well, it's supposed to be four units from this point, so the radius is going to be 4, but 4 squared is 16. Okay, well, there's the formula for all the points that actually satisfy that second part, which are four units from the point 1, 3. Okay, but now the points we're looking for have an extra property. Do you see it? The extra property is that x and y are equal. So what I have to now do is say, okay, so if x x equals y, then what does that mean? It means that I can sort of replace the y by x. So let's do that. Well, then I would see x minus 1 squared plus x minus 3 squared equals 16. Right? I'm just saying if x and y are the same, I can replace this y by an x. And now I have this. Well, now I have just an equation, you see, with just x's in it. So I can solve this. Now, how would you solve this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to foil everything out here and see uh, what this thing looks like and then try to combine and factor and yin, 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 yin. It's a quadratic. I'm going to now um, square this out. x squared, I'm going to do it one step, but I'll talk through it. Now, if you have to visualize now an x minus 1 right here. So I see a minus x, another minus x, that's minus 2x. Minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. Now I add a similar thing here, x squared minus 6x plus 9, and that equals 16. Well, that's just a big old mess. Let's combine things a little bit. I see I have 1x squared here, another x squared here, so that's 2x squared. How many x's do I have? I have negative 2 x's here, and I have a minus 6 x here, so that's the total of minus 8 x. And what do I have here? I've got a 1 constant and a 9 constant, so that's a 10 constant. If I bring the 16 constant over to the other side, that's a minus 16, but I have a 10, so that's going to be minus 6 equals 0. Notice I can divide everything through by 2. I have a common factor of 2 everywhere. If I do that, I would see just x squared minus 4x minus 3 equals 0. And let's see if uh, this can be factored or not. So this is x, x. The negative sign tells me they're opposite signs. So I've got a minus and a plus. I need something whose product is 3, but combine to subtract to give 4. And I don't know about this, because if I put in a 3 here and a 1 here, that's only going to give me a minus 3, and the same thing here. So I think, actually, this one's not going to be factorable. Sorry. So I guess I have to use the quadratic formula. So if we use the quadratic formula, let's see how that would play out. So the quadratic formula on this thing, I'd see that x equals negative b, so there's the quadratic formula, of course, negative b, so that'd be negative negative 4, which is 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which would be minus 4 squared, or 16, minus 4 times ac. Well, a times c would be negative 3, so that would make this negative sign a plus 3 times 3, all over 2a. And so what I would see here 
is 4 plus or minus the square root of, and I have 16 plus 12, which would be 28 over 2. And so that's the x value. And since x and y are equal, I see that, in fact, uh, this is also the y value. And so what I conclude is the following. And there's two answers here, of course. So what are the two answers? So for which points do we have these things that satisfy the question? Well, the answer would be 4 plus square root of 28 over 2, comma itself. Oops, 28 to 2. And the same thing with the minus in between there, 4 minus square root of 28 over 2, comma 4 minus square root of 28 over 2. So these are the two points that satisfy those things. By the way, um, what does this look like graphically? I mean, should there be two answers? Maybe you think there should only be one answer. Well, if you think about it, I think there really should be two answers. Because if you have a circle, let's see, it's centered. Let me see if I can draw this uh, somewhat accurately. I'll do my best. It's centered at, what was the point again? Uh, 1, comma 3. So 1, comma 3. And its radius is 4. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it looks sort of like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we want to see where, in fact, x and y are equal. Well, x and y are equal, actually, along this line. It sort of goes like this. These are all the points where x and y are equal. Look, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. These are all the points where x and y are equal. You see? 0, 0, minus 1, minus 1. And you can see that, in fact, this circle crosses the line at two points. And those are the two answers that we actually found. Neat. OK, so there we answered that question, sort of an interesting question. And now let me close with one last question. This question is, um, let's see, find the equation of the circle having smallest radius that contains the two points 1, 4 and minus 3, 2. Let me draw a picture of this first. So I have 1, 4, 1, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's 1, 4. And then I have minus 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, minus 3, 1, 2. So there's minus 3, 2. And if you think about it, there are actually a lot of circles, a lot of circles that pass through those points. In fact, there are infinitely many circles that pass through those points. Let me show you some. There's a real big one. I can even get a bigger one. I can get even a bigger one. Look at this one. Woo! That is a hugey. You see that one? But I can get a smaller ones, too. I can get one that sort of looks like this. There's a smaller circle. But I want the smallest circle. And if you think about it, to get the smallest circle, that means that these two points should be as far apart as possible on the circle, which would mean that these two points should be opposite points in the circle. And so in fact, the circle should look something like this. Well, not very ovally, but these two points should be opposite points. If they're opposite points, then the center of the circle should be right in the midpoint of those two things. So to find the center, I find the midpoint. So midpoint would equal the center. And what would that be? Well, I average the x's, so I take 1 plus minus 3, and I get minus 2, and divide by 2. And then I average the y's, which is a 4, minus, a 4 plus 2, which is 6, divided by 2. And so I'd see that the center is minus 1, comma 3, which looks pretty good, by the way. Look, minus 1, comma 3 looks actually very good. And what would the radius be? How would I find the radius? Well, the radius would just be, in fact, the distance between one of these points and the midpoint. So I'll use distance formula. So radius would equal what? Well, it would be the square root. And so this point now, let me put this in for you. This is the point minus 1, 3. That's that point right there. So the distance between these two points, I take minus 1 and subtract minus 3. That's minus 1 minus minus 3. So that's minus 1 plus 3, which would be 2. And then I have to square that number. And then I add to that the difference in the y's. So 3 minus 2, which is just uh, 1 squared. 
And so that's the square root of 4 plus 1, which is the square root of 5. So the radius of the circle is the square root of 5. We were asked to find the equation of the circle. I know its center. I know its radius. So the equation I can write down as what? x minus, and then the x point, which is a negative 1. So minus a minus is a plus 1 squared, plus y minus the y point, which is 3. And this equals the radius squared. So what's the square root of 5 squared? It's just 5. So in fact, this is the answer. This is the smallest circle that contains these two points. That's pretty cool. If you want to find the smallest circle that contains two points, just make them the opposite points. And if you think about it, that's as small as you're going to possibly get. They're as far apart as possible. Therefore, the midpoint, that must be the center. You can compute the radius by looking at the distance between one of the midpoints and one of these endpoints you found. Anyway, enjoy yourselves with circles. They're the most beautiful, symmetric thing around. Around! <laughs> I snuck one in there without you looking. <laughs>